On this episode of History Hunters, we explore a town in the heart of the motherload, steeped in the history of the California Gold Rush. Sarah and I hope that you'll join us as we take a stroll down a historic main street of one of the legendary Gold Rush towns of California. So on this episode of History Hunters, we are in Placerville, California, which was originally known as Dry Diggings, also known as Hangtown. Right there on that lot is where they used to hang criminals. It used to be a high tree. This was a hay yard. I think it was owned by Mr. Elston. And we're in the parking lot area. <laughs> this is called Stagecoach Alley. This is where they used to run the stagecoaches along through here. I understand that right over here is a plaque that talks about Yes, somewhere in this area, the, the remains of three people who were hung for stealing and killing, killed by vigilantes here in dry diggings. Right there is Placerville City Hall. And somewhere in this area are the remains of the three men who were hung here for violating the law at the time. It says, let us not judge them too harshly. But those were the rough days of the Great Gold Rush. This town is just full of stuff to see. Historical markers and buildings that I'm gonna talk about. Sarah's going along. Right here's a mural that talks about this being Hangtown. It was named Hangtown because they had a system of quick justice here in town. I wanna to go across the street, talk about the historic Cary Hotel. So this is the famous Carey House Hotel. It was built in 1857 by William Carey. Millions of dollars of gold and silver had been brought here. In fact, it was a, this side, I believe over here, was the Wells Fargo agent shop. And the legendary, legendary stagecoach driver, Harry Monk. Look at over there. I know, we're gonna get to that. The legendary stagecoach driver, Hank Monk, actually delivered Horace Greeley here. I believe it was 1840, 1859. He was running for president of the United States. It was said that Mr. Greeley gave a speech up there. It's remembered that this place is where Mark Twain stayed and also Black Bart. Uh, actress Betty Davis stayed here. There was also rumor that Elvis Presley stayed here, but I don't think that was ever substantiated. Pretty the cool. Old window covering. It's pretty cool, huh? Yeah. The whole building here. Very historic hotel. I'm wow. gonna go in here and see if there's anything that we can see in here. Yeah, it's just right over there. It's the door next to that big mirror. Okay. Here's a picture of this hotel right here. People that we know of that uh, stayed here. Whole book here that explains. Studebaker, Levi Strauss stayed here as well. Horace Greeley, there's a shot of him. So supposedly this has a signature of Buffalo Bill and Mark Twain, but not open to this page. 1888 it's open to. There's the legendary hangman's tree over there. There's the gentleman up there, he's been strung up. A, now a historical landmark. The one time that was just an empty lot, it's now an ice cream parlor. There were five bad guys who were caught stealing and murdering people. So they had a short court, a miner's court they called it. And they actually executed the three individuals who were the worst of the bunch by hanging them from the tree, which no longer exists. I understand that the trunk of that tree is in the basement of that candy shop. Pretty cool downtown, huh? They say that a lot of people that are going up Highway 50 don't even know about this place because they just zip on by, not realizing that a very historic district is located right here. So this is now a bookstore, but at one time it was the Union Hotel. It had a large gaming hall here. It's called the United States Trio. Its owner was Benjamin Nickerson. He first engaged in the business of promoting short-lived bloody sport of bull and bear and donkey fighting on Circus Hill. But public opinion shut the ring down and he turned his marketing skills towards liquor and cards. So he actually built a two-story wooden building here in 1852. At one time had 75 rooms. 
What'd you find? Toys and candy. Toys and candy. This area right here includes the historic <laughs> bell. Okay, I did not time that, but that's how it worked out. Anyway, that that bell I understand dates back to the 1850s. They used to have fires up here, and I think it's 1856 they had a major fire, burned half the town down. So they had to have a system to notify the volunteers who were fighting fires. So that bell up there was ordered in 1860. It was cast in England, and it arrived here in Placerville in 1865. You know how much it cost to put that in? $380. There's a historic Mason Temple, 1893, it says on top. It's one of the historic buildings that survived the fires, obviously because it was made out of brick. So in California, you had a military governor by the name of Richard Mason, and he reported to President Polk that there was a lot of gold coming out of this area of California. And shortly after that, it made it to the New York newspapers. And from there, this area just took off. Camp was hauling out thousands of dollars worth of gold. And this settlement boomed, became a central supply and transportation center for this area. Here's a shot here of the Fairchild's building. 1903, when there was an excavation began here for the building, there was enough gold found to finance the entire project, which totaled $16,000. So here was a pharmacy and a soda fountain. So I'm going to tell you about this historic spot. It's right here. It's Thomas Kincaid's first gallery. Thomas Kincaid grew up in Placerville. Graduated here in 1976 from El Dorado High School. And I understand that this was his first gallery. So obviously Placerville had a huge influence on Thomas Kincaid's life. In fact, he painted a lot of the buildings here, a lot of the quaint old Victorian houses were, were actually modeled after some of those that are here. So that building over there was where the Empire Theater was. It was built in 1850. That building right there was actually built in 1930. This was a location of a landmark where John O'Donnell and his partner CBM Russell enlarged an original building and supplied miners with good clean rooms, good food, a 10-pin bowling alley, a billiard room, as well as stage plays, and it was lost in the 1856 fire and was replaced by the Placerville Theater. Right here is the Placerville Hardware Store. It was established in 1852. It's been a continuous operation ever since, making it the oldest operating hardware store west of the Mississippi River. But you could even buy gold panning supplies in here just like they did back in the 1850s. Have you found anything to buy? No. What do you think of the candy store? Fun stuff. There's toys and games and candy. Anything you want to get? No. No? Like a lot of the gold rush towns, you start to get the sense that this is a major tourist trap. You could tell that these buildings are quite old. Right here, this talks about this being the Odd Fellows Hall, instituted in 1854. The original building was destroyed by a fire that started in the woodshed behind the county courthouse in 1910. So this one was actually rebuilt in 1911. This Odd Fellows Hall is now, it looks like an army surplus store. A dead bear in the window. Look at your look at your bear. I know. That's what I found too. Someone killed him. Someone did kill him. Long time ago probably. Yeah, he's pretty rough shape. Papa. The sailor man. Sarah's got her eyes on this lizard type thing over here. And he likes it, yeah, he likes it right here. And he'll fall asleep when you do that. And he likes it What is it? 
A bearded dragon. A bearded dragon. <laughs> This public restroom was made of bricks that were used in a, the Douglas Hines building. That was in operation here from 1856 to 1982, and apparently they tore it down to make way for the Fountain Plaza. But these bricks date back to 1852. So after Placerville was destroyed by fire, with many of the buildings being wood, they decided they would better use some materials that would withstand fire. If this looks like a firehouse, it actually is. It's the Confidence Fire Station. This was a door at one time. I would roll the fire engine out. It was erected in 1860 for Confidence Engine Company Number 1, organized in June of 1857. Sarah's walking in front of the courthouse. This building was destroyed by fire in, I believe, 1912 or 1911 and was completely rebuilt as this structure the following year. So this building dates back to, I believe, 1912. These, I understand, are civil work cannons that were introduced here. I'm sure that's the solid brass. At one time, the county seat of El Dorado County was Coloma. This town was called Dry Diggings because there wasn't a lot of water. The people who were mining had to take their dirt that contained the gold and cart it off to an area where they could wash it out. Henceforth, they call it Dry Diggings. You would never guess it, but that round table over there was the site of the Presbyterian Church that backed up to the hill over there. So right here at a place called the Bagel Works is a little monument that talks about John Studebaker. He came here when he was 19 in 1853. And like a lot of young men, he came out here to make it rich. And just as soon as he got here, he was approached by Mr. Hines. It was a Hines and Ola's had a blacksmith shop here. And they asked if he could repair wagon wheels and make wagons. Studebaker and his brothers had manufactured wagons back in Indiana. And he said, of course, he could work on it. He actually started making wheelbarrows for the miners and sold them for $10 a piece. A couple years later, he had like $8,000 in his pocket from all the, the money that he made off the miners. He went back east. So he started making carriages with his brother. In fact, it became a well-known car brand named Studebaker. It's said that this parking lot right here at Tortilla Flats Mexican Restaurant is where the Heinz wagon shop is located. One thing's for sure, it was right here somewhere. Like I said, Mr. Tudebaker's shop was over here where the town hall is. There's just so much history here in Placerville that I took me almost a whole day of cramming to figure out where everything was. Found out there's just a lot of stuff to know. Now I gotta tell you a little bit about this building. This is the Fountain of Thomas Soda Works. I understand that this building has two foot thick walls. It was used as an ice house and soda works. They actually made soda water in here. It is now the museum. As you can see the thickness of that window up there is actually how thick that building was. Spring water was piped into this facility and they used this primitive CO2 operation and they created soda water right here in this building. There we go. Building erected in 1852 withstood the fire of 1856. There's two people right inside this door but I'm sure you're gonna rib for information. Hi. Soda water. What did they make it for? Did it taste like ale or alka seltzer? Like now they have seltzer water. Like water. Like water. Like Did they water. flavor it? I don't know. Little bit. This is an example of a soda water machine, 1894. Wow. What was in here looked more like this oh, wow. than that picture. You didn't, wouldn't think that technology would have existed back then, but there it is. Well, you know, that's really funny because I know a lot of people think because it was way back then that everybody was stupid. 
are a lot smarter in many, many, many ways. I think so. Than we are today. Yeah. You can pick out this. Oh, that's the tree. Little bit of it. That's the tree, huh? And there you have a piece of the hangman's tree right here. A little display on no shoe Thompson. There's a Bible up there too. There's a Bible? Mm -hmm. Of what? The poem to him. Oh really? Okay. There's this Bible with his signature in it. John Thompson. Born in 1827. Hangtown Placerville Band. So once upon a time in this very intersection was the Methodist Church. It was just a beautiful building. I believe it came down in the 1960s. The church would have been located right over here. It's erected to the Druids. This has been here since 1926 crazy. Way back in the day, 1850s, this chapter was instituted in 1859. Right there is a little plaque. It talks about the Druids. The Methodist Church was right there. Now it's this ugly 1960s C&H motor parts. That's a real shame that they do that. They tear down these beautiful historic churches and then they build this 1960s crap. Yeah, that's just a cool monument back there. Kind of risk your life to go see it. On this side of the building is a historic sign for Whelan's beer. That's cool, that looks very old. But these little plates up here have these bolts that run through the building, kind of keep the building together. This is just stacked slate, it looks like, seaming it together. Those bolts supply some support to the structure. Obviously back here it's concrete, but it's probably flaking concrete. Yeah, look at that. Jeez. This, this whole building is going to collapse someday. Which might explain why buildings are tore down. This Hangman Leather Shop, 1859. Look at that. Gee. As you can see by the crumbling of the back concrete. It's that old. It's pretty old. Obviously some iron doors swung on these hinges right here. Very old shop. When they were digging out the foundation for this one retail building up here, that they found enough gold in it that they had $16,000 that paid for the building. Let's buy some property and just start digging. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, at the top of that building, it says JS 1861. It's now the Arts and Cultural Center. This plaque here dedicates this building to Immigrant Jane, who drove a band of horses across the plains and from the proceeds of their sale, she erected this building in 1861. Just coming across the United States to this area was just a major accomplishment. We're at Old Town Grill here having a bite to eat and Sarah found an animal. Sierra. He's a little sketchy though, he doesn't like people. So earlier I was looking for this Randolph Jewelers shop because I understood that it was the longest operating jewelry store west of the Mississippi. A continuous operation and I see that it's closed so I guess I can't say that now the very old-fashioned Rexall drugstore over there so the signs been up there since the 60s so this here is the Bales building the sign says it was used as a post office from 1854 through 1858 and famous Norwegian skier and mailman Snowshoe Thompson picked up his first mail here in 1856. So the mural behind me is of Snowshoe Thompson. He was legendary in these parts for delivering mail between Placerville and Virginia City and then Carson City, often with his snowshoes. It was crazy. I understand that across the street here is where the Pony Express office was for a short time in 1860, 1861. This is where the Pony Express station and terminus was. It operated here from April 4th, 1860 to June 30th, 1861. Founders of the Pony Express are up here. Russell, Majors, 
and Waddell. Pony Express office right here. It's just a parking lot. Mel's Diner's over there. And over there's the fire department. So with the Placerville mural behind me, we're gonna say this is gonna conclude our episode of History Hunters here in Placerville. We hope that you enjoyed learning a bit about one of the earliest communities in California. One thing I didn't add, Placerville at one time was the third largest city in California, only behind Sacramento and San Francisco. That's something you didn't read about in your history books. Anyway, we hope you hit the subscribe button. Also give us a like and a comment. <laughs>